Друзья, я рад приветствовать вас на канале «Секреты большого тенниса». С вами Денис Семенихин. Сегодня мне предстоит пообщаться с девушкой по имени Эрин, которая отвечает за физподготовку теннисистов в университете Санта-Барбара-Стейт. Я надеюсь, будет интересно. Поехали! What do you do here in this on this campus? So here at UCSB, I am the strength and conditioning coach for the men's women's tennis program. Okay, so all the physical preparation that these tennis players go through is your responsibility. Correct. So every uh, year the tennis team comes in, I do a round of assessments on them. So just figuring out, you know, what their you know, maybe movement patterns are and where they need to progress in those, and then just basic strength levels, vertical jump. Um, broad jump, push-up, pull-ups, stuff like that. If we talk about Russian viewers, people who love tennis, what would you recommend them in terms of assessment or exercises, movements? I mean, just, you know, direct this conversation. Right. So I think, um, like, first and foremost, it's always really important to do get an overall movement screen done uh, by a professional and somebody who can assess, you know, where you're at physically and how your movement patterns are affects, affecting your overall life and not to mention your tennis game. So that's just making sure you move through a full range of motion through simple patterns that we do in an everyday basis, like squat, a push-up, a pull-up. Um, and there's, and then you can get kind of down into some nitty gritty stuff that somebody in that profession would be able to help you a lot. Okay, can you, can we run through the quick assessment on, uh, on my example? Right. Say so if, if I'm the, the person who wants to play, to play tennis. Well, yeah, to absolutely. Right. So if you just want to stand, um, feet shoulder width apart. Yes. Perfect. And you can just put your hands out in front. And from there, I just want you to move all the way through a full range of motion. Hands like this. Yep, uh -huh. just hands out in front. Just, feet yep. pointing forward. Yep, feet just pointing straight ahead. And I just want you to move through a full range of motion body weight squat. Beautiful. So this right off the top is going to give a general idea of what of your movement pattern. So I can see that your ankles might be a spot of weakness there and that you might need to do some an special ankle strengthening stuff because we know that your ankles are going to affect your knees, are going to affect the rest of your body as well. So okay. that's just kind of a quick target that we want to set you through there. Okay, how did you determine that? Um, so as you squatted, I saw your ankles were kind of rolling in. Yeah. You were unable to keep your full heel down. Yeah, I, I, would, yeah I, would, I would try to, uh, to point them outwards. Yeah, you if, can try I, pointing your... Squats, yep. yeah. yeah. Yeah, then it, then yeah, it's and then a little it bit. can place them on the ground. So a lot of times, um, which is why the usually assessments are always done in a certain in a certain gotcha. way, so that you can always find those quick hitters. Where you know your ankles, you may still be able to work out. It wouldn't be anything that's inhibiting you from playing tennis. It's just maybe something that we could work on so that you can pay, play tennis for the rest of your life. And that's what's most important um, for tennis players in general. Is tennis is a lifelong game, yeah. and even though you may be you know trying to be a professional tennis player or wherever you're at, a high school tennis player, um, wherever you're at, their longevity of tennis is what makes the game so popular and so great. Okay. Then next. So the next one we might do is just to if you get come down into a push-up position. Mm -hmm. And with that, I would uh, we always instruct just to put the hands directly under the shoulder blades. Good. And then the main thing I'm going to watch here is to make sure that your core is going to stay engaged through a whole range of motion. So if you're perfect, yep. So just watching from here to here, making sure that he's not breaking through the core and able to keep his elbows in nice and tight. Come all the way down through a full range of motion. Beautiful. And press back up. That looks great. So what I might see um, in a tennis player in particular that has played a lot of tennis, you're going to see that right shoulder or whatever side their dominant shoulder is dive and maybe do the majority of the work, whereas their left shoulder might not be doing as much work. And just watching overall the way their scaps move on their back is going to give you a good frame of reference for either how long they've been playing tennis and if that's all they've primarily been doing and not working on a overall strengthening program. Okay, then next. I'm, I'm memorizing right now. <laughs> okay, so so you mean in, in my push-up there was no uh, like it's anything unnormal. Every, right, you were able to, so that also is going to show just total overall core placement. So if you're able to go through a full range of motion push-up and not have that back arch, so many people now, because of just the way society is, have all kinds of back pain. Yeah. 
Yes. Right? So back pain is like the number one thing that I think probably doctors are making millions and millions of dollars off of because everybody now has back pain. And that's because we sit so much more as a society. Um, and everything that we do, all of our jobs now are sitting, um, video games and everything else that, you know, we grow up doing is just so different than, you know, maybe what they were doing before that. Mm -hmm. So just watching to make sure your core is able to stabilize uh -huh. while your upper body is truly doing all the work. Okay. Next movement. So another movement, especially as a tennis player that I would have someone do is just to do a lateral lunge. So if you are um, kind of widen out your feet, again, toes point straight ahead. Good. And then your arms again will just come out in front and I just want you to sit all the way over to one side. Perfect. And then come back up. Good. And now go to the other side. Perfect. And come back up. Great. So what that's going to show us again, see again, your ankle, not to call you out on your ankle. No, that's good, that's good. Yeah, your ankles are, are maybe just a little stiff and tight, which is again, something that is pretty common, especially for, you know, someone who does exercise a lot like yourself, maybe just hasn't overall paid attention to an inhibiting factor such as an ankle because you have such great movements otherwise and you are a strong individual. So sometimes um, coming back to something minor like an ankle um, could just keep the longevity of a game if we're talking strictly tennis to um, keep them playing the game longer because your ankles are going to affect your balance, your stability yeah. and your overall quickness to play and that's what's going to keep you playing long term. That's just kind of a general, like if you were a first time client of mine and coming in and that might be something I just run you through just to overall see how you move and maybe what movement patterns you're lacking or maybe just some muscle imbalances, um, like something like if your core would have dropped and you'd been unable to stabilize, yeah. I would know that, you know, that is a, that would probably be the, where we would start for you. Okay. What would we start with? with me so right now I would say yeah just working on that full range of motion body weight squat while maintaining the good balance in the ankle so we'd probably do a lot of stability um, work with you so any upper body work that we would do we would probably do it balancing so that we have to you have to maintain balance while going through like upper body curl to press or really? anything of that nature so standing on one foot standing on one foot so that you just learn to, to stabilize so if you are going to do let's say you're just going to do a single arm curl or single leg curl to press so we'll go ahead and balance there on your left foot okay. pull that right foot up we always go teach knee up toe up because that's how we sprint okay, okay. and then from there so it, up, toe up. Yep, because that's the way that we sprint and that's what we want. Uh -huh. See, we found a weakness. Yeah. So from here, let's say that you're doing curl to press, just overhead curl to press. So from there, and then you're going to maintain balance while working on a simple curl to press motion. Now we've added this in to help maybe work on your stabilization. Oh, yeah. And that's going to work everything from your core all the way down to that ankle. Yeah, but the most, the most, uh, resistance or not resistance the most trouble i feel right here while doing this you know what i mean the most like like the uh, the, the most work is done there it's not it's not here right yeah, yeah exactly this, this is the toughest right. right now and that and sometimes i mean especially with a tennis player we're not we're not trying to create somebody who's very muscle bound and tight because that's going to um, inhibit their tennis game long term because the tennis is a whipping motion just like the swing of a bat or um, the swing of a golf club. It's all going to start in our hips and it's going to go to our torso and it's going to go to our arm and then eventually it's going to go to the racket. So if anything in that chain is messed up or is not performing as we'd like it to, mm -hmm. um, then your body is going to compensate for that. So a lot of times we see shoulder injuries or elbow injuries because maybe I don't rotate the way I should through my spine fine or I'm not able to stabilize through my core and now I'm getting that from my arm. Yeah. If that makes sense. Erin, why yeah, absolutely it does make sense. Why don't you give me the uh, like selection of exercises or like the, the spectrum of exercises that would help with all those potential problems? Like you showed me one for the uh, for, for the ankles. So right. I can do it on, on both sides and I can do different exercises like like let's say probably side lateral something right like that. yep yeah. besides presses yeah and so that's just kind of taking you know you're still gonna get your upper body work in um, so basically the main philosophy of everything that we do is movement first and you're an athlete and I want you to train like an athlete so I'm gonna always basically always keep you on your feet I'm not gonna use a machine I'm not gonna use a leg press I'm not gonna you know we'll use some pulley machines um, and such like that but most of the things that you're gonna be doing is gonna be you standing or lunging or mm -hmm. pressing or something not sitting down, not laying down, because we want you to be an athlete and that's, you know, that's where you're going to perform and train and become a better tennis player. 
there. Yeah, let's go through all those exercises. Okay. I'm ready. Yeah, awesome. Okay. So the first thing, so squatting is a big part of our program, and you kind of already demonstrated a really nice squat. So, and there's a millions of ways that we can do squat, right? And so for the majority of the general public, and for um, a tennis player especially, we don't need you to have a 300 pound or a 300 kilo back squat. Yeah. Don't really care that much. The main thing for you is that you're able to move through a full range of motion. So what I would have you do is probably hold on to a kettlebell or a dumbbell okay. um, just right so in the let's front. Say, let's say kettlebell is here. Yep, so it's, we like we call this the goblet position, which is pretty standard across yeah. all nations. Um, so with that, then from there, you're going to just move all the way down through a full range of motion squat. So what about my toes still? Can I pull them, point them outwards? Because I'm tall, it's very difficult for me to, to keep the weight on my heels. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, so I, either I have to go wide. The sumo squat. Yeah, yeah then I can do this mm -hmm. properly. And if, if it's like this, then I will go on my on my toes, you know, my knees will go. Right, and so there's a number of things that you can do. You can elevate your heels a little bit just to help you move yeah. through a full range of motion. What should I do? Um, but you can move your legs out a little bit okay. for, um, for training purposes. But with that, you know, basics the, the first thing that we want to do is establish a base with all of our athletes so this is a great exercise a goblet squat uh, moving through probably you know three sets of 10 three sets of 12 just learning that movement and becoming really consistent in that movement being able to keep the knees out as you stand up that's going to mm -hmm. ensure that your glutes are activating properly yeah. um, so three over, sets of 10 three sets of 10 three sets of 12 and then as you progress into some heavier weights you can bump the number down and maybe get a couple extra sets in so there. with these guys you don't do high reps like 30 50, no, no no we need. never do high reps like that though that's the type of training that you're already getting on the tennis court and we don't want them come into the weight room and do exactly what they just did on the tennis court. So tennis, you know, you're you're always moving quickly, you're hitting a lot of reps, that's the game of tennis, right? right. So we want you to be able to, to create some strength and stability and then be able to take that back out onto the court. So not going to have them exactly replicate what they just yeah. did on the all court right. because otherwise we're just going to we're going to increase all those overuse injuries that a tennis player already has. Yeah, this makes sense. Okay. Yeah, Next. so uh -huh. another lower body exercise that I think uh, most everybody can do in general fitness terms um, is just a lunge or a split squat. So if you come down to the ground, perfect. And from there, we just want to make sure that your knee is directly below your hip and that your this knee is directly below your foot there. From there, you're just going to move up and down. So this is the shortest variation, the easiest variation of this movement. Until Perfect. my knee touches. Yep. And then you can put a pad or something under your knee. You can do these okay. exercises on the tennis court or in the gym. Uh, and there's a million variations that you can do from here. So from there, if you if you go from that split squat and then you come up to a balance position. So we're talking back about balance. So we're going from a split squat uh -huh. to a forward. Good. And go right back into a split squat position, lunge position. Perfect. And then you can go the opposite way and now step your foot forward. Okay. So you're coming forward up to a balance into a forward lunge and then back up. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, so and you can continue. and then you can continue forward. So you can take make that exercise has a the you can the broadest spectrum of exercise that you can do because you can stay stationary with it, you can start to transition, um, you can add weight to that movement, you can vary the movement in a millions of different ways. And that's uh -huh. kind of the point of, you know, tennis in general is that you know you're going to be in a lot of different positions on the tennis court so we're going to try to put you in a lot of different positions and work your muscles in different ways just by making small variations yeah what does this give you just balance balance just coming up into that yeah so you know the beginner who's maybe working on balance you you know make a focus of that for somebody who's you know progressing through and let's say they're an, more of an elite level athlete um you know, starting to add more weight to that and starting to push a little bit more weight, weight and having the focus. Weight in your hands. Weight in your hands. You can put a weight on your back. You can put a weight vest on. Okay. Um, all we we load in a millions of different what's the, ways. What's the best in your opinion? In your hands, because this will tense the the, the traps and so on. You know, make them kind of. Right. I think overall for a tennis player, I think kettlebells are probably the kettlebells. best thing somebody could so do. So you, here. Yeah, you're you're not going to get hurt using kettlebells more yeah. than likely, um, and it's a, in general very safe way to practice. Nice. nice. Um, and yeah, that's one of the we primarily use kettlebells. We do a little bit of barbell work, but primarily mm -hmm. we're working a lot. Of What's the rep range for this one? 
what are those? Um, probably those? about the same. So as with the beginner, I would keep the reps higher, not going over 15 ever, staying okay, more so around 10. And then as they progress and start adding weight to the movement, then I would go more around five to six. Okay, all right. Yeah. So Next. then we can get into some um, upper body movement. So push up, we kind of talked about that. I think it's also really important for us to be able to pull. Okay, so we, you know, again, everything that we do is coming forward right so we we're always playing tennis we're coming forward very so we're also getting our pecs very very tight so what and we're also folding everything forward so we really want to strengthen those rhomboids and you know just those lower trapezius that we can actually pull and hold yourself in that position okay and so that so we can strengthen rows, those most yeah like we do the pulley with the pulley yep you could do rows with a pulley you can do single arm rows you can go bent over rows you know you can do pull-ups you can Dumbbells. do dumbbell uh -huh. rows you'll do it standing yep or just yeah you can something? go um i usually you know never again we want them always to be to never to be like leaning over okay. or, or putting their foot up a lot of a lot of bodybuilder style might be more to like put your foot yeah. on the bench where i'm going to want an athlete to engage and oh. hold themselves but most of the weight is being held in their core okay and then let's say you're kind of have your hand on a bench there and then you're going but to no, row okay, in a good position balance. Just, just for, for balance. balance yep and then you're going to row completely loading okay. good that scap and that's just going to help open up. So again, just like we talked about the lunges or the split squats, rows have a millions of variations. And it's about you know picking what's right for the athlete. So somebody, it might be too much for them, or maybe they've had a shoulder injury and pull-ups are too much. But almost everybody can do a, like a supine row. So laying on their back, rowing up to a bar, rolling up to a TRX strap, mm -hmm. um, something of that sort. Okay. TRX. And again, weight, so yeah. So that means like this, TRX. Yep, so you're gonna be lying underneath and then pulling up to the sky. Nice, yeah. You're saying you can we'll do that single arm and double okay. arm mm -hmm. um, as well through all those movements. And that's again, just a great way to again, open yourself back up because everything that we're doing is folding ourselves forward, really tightening our pecs. So would you say that tennis players, especially the professionals, like these guys who like play all the time, uh, that they have the tendency for their shoulders to, to pull forward a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Why and, is that? Because of and so, because everything chest. that they do is in that motion. So every, every motion is coming forward. And a lot of, we're not ever like opening up. So really, I mean, we might hit a backhand, but all of our power is coming forward. All we're doing is loading, mm -hmm. coming back. So it's usually like a two to run ratio of pulling motions to pressing motions in the weight room. So again, we're trying to help out those imbalances so that their tennis career, again, is as long as they'd like it to be. And that, you know, that's the overall goal of everything that we do here is to keep them playing the sport that they love yeah. for as long as they can. Erin, so then I have a question. Uh, since tennis is not symmetrical, obviously, you use one, one side or e even if you hit a backhand with, with, with two, two hands, still it's, it's not symmetrical. Right. Would you do symmetrical exercises for them to even out the, uh, the physique? Yep, absolutely. So we're, we always work both sides of that spectrum. So we're going to train, you know, the right arm individually, the left arm individually, but I would never, just because you're right-handed, never would I ever only train your right side. So we want, we you, and you're going to see, like if you watch any tennis player that's, you know, our big time players in the world right now, you're going to see their forearms more developed, their biceps more developed on that dominant hand, but you would never train someone that way because we want to help even them out and help them to become more symmetrical in their everyday life so that they don't end up with a very bad shoulder problem yeah but from your experience let's say if if i do i'm let's say i'm a tennis player mm -hmm. and i'm i'm left-handed if i do 10 reps with the left hand i mean with, with my left side and then 10 reps with my, with my right side will that create symmetry or will i have to do something really symmetrical let's say with a trx and making sure maybe even letting go one you know like when you have just one handle mm -hmm. and the other one is just imitating and trying to keep it balanced you know what i mean how do yeah. how to recreate so the you're symmetry? always going to if, if you're if you've played tennis let's say for like even one year and you've taken let's say a thousand reps on one side compared to your let's say for you it's your left you've taken a thousand reps on your left and you've taken zero reps on your right coming into the weight room and doing three sets of 10 is not going to solve your problem but it is going to help your body recognize and strengthen through your core which is going to keep you stronger in the long run mm -hmm. anyways um, but you're always going to let your weak side be your guide you're never going to out train your weak side 
So does that make sense? So if you're if you're doing single arm bench press and you can hit, let's say, 100 kilos on yeah. your left side, yeah. but you can only do 80 kilos on your right side, you're never doing 100 kilos on your left side because okay, you gotcha. you'd never want to so, overtrain so, your. So that weak means arm. you're undertraining this this strong arm and just training actively your your weak. weak right. Side. So your weak side's always gotcha. going to be your guide. Okay. So if you. Yep, and that's kind of goes for all of activity, whether it, you know whether you have a hurt knee or you have a hurt shoulder, you're never going to overtrain your weak side. Okay. Or outtrain uh, your yeah. weak side. Uh -huh. Okay. Next, what else? And so another thing that we're always so we have we are power athlete, right? Working with tennis players. So a lot of what we'll do is, um, and I know we don't have a med ball out here today, but we can kind of talk through some of the med ball exercises that one might do in a weight room um, to benefit their tennis career. Um, and so that's just really taking all the strength that they've built over a program. So let's say you started a phase and you've been at it for six to eight weeks and you've really developed some um, baseline level strength to be able to now move into a little bit more like power, power motion. So there, you know, anything from jumps um, to like, you know, jump and clap push-ups to then working into some med ball work and that just really and the, actually the tennis players all love doing it because it's what they're most comfortable doing so okay. it's taking somewhat of a tennis motion and now adding a weighted med ball to that okay. um, so a lot of things that we do are like a throw um, yep. so show me how so if you're if you like so if I'm playing tennis I'm yep. used to being here you're gonna completely load and then you throw that ten or that med ball into mm -hmm. a wall. Can we do it in pairs? Yeah. Like we had like yeah, two, you, two tennis players, or it has to be a trainer and a tennis player. You can do it however you want. Just obviously, if um, you know, you want to make sure that they're aware of what's going to happen. Because if you're throwing a 12 to 20 pound med ball, you want to be yeah. ready to catch that. Okay. Med ball. But so if we were if we were partners here and yes. we were throwing so um, we, we a med like ball this? back and forth, sure, okay. we could do this. So this would just mm -hmm. be a side lateral toss med yeah. ball throw. Okay. So from here, we'd want to load the hips just like we do um, in tennis. And then the whole action is going to be led by the hips and then finish through with the arms. Okay. So you're going to load and explode through the hips. Okay, then I, then then I you're catch. Gonna catch. Yeah, then and I, then you're going to load through. Yep. And then you're going to take the ball back behind you and then throw. And like kind you of said, creating with, that with whipping the, motion, with, yep, using your with hips. With the hips, all right. Yep. So basically the, the hips rotate first, then the body. Right, yeah, our hips are going to be the power, like the power of all powerful movements that we're going to do. So okay. your, your hips are going to lead a lot of that. So when we, you know, we jump, a lot of that power is coming from the hips. So we want to learn how to properly load mm -hmm. the hips okay, so and then this, train that. With this med, med ball throwing, how many reps? What's, what's um, never want to, yeah, distance, you, you know, if, if somebody's doing it by themselves, putting them up against a wall, um, if you're doing it in a court in an open field, you know, you just want to make sure, you know, that you're always picking the med ball up correctly. Uh -huh. So you, it's not necessarily how far of a distance, it's just that you're, you know, you're then picking the med ball up correctly because you don't want to go around picking up a 40 pound med ball and like bending over and oh, like okay. hurting your back. So, so you always want to go pick up the med ball just like you pick up any yeah. weight, right? Yeah. But just a lot of times when you, you know, you start adding balls and other elements to the equation, you know, you kind of forget that you're training. Okay. So just always keeping training at the front of mind. Gotcha. So that's a great way because everything that we do here, again, being led by the hips, but then turning through our T-spine and then finishing it with the arms. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's um, a big reps? movement that we do. Um, again, under 12, never going really over 12 reps, because again, we want to keep it more into a power movement. On each side. So, On e so absolutely. So 12. even though you may be a left-handed tennis player, you're never going to only train, because you only hit left, like you're not side. going to only yeah. train. You're going to train both sides. Of the what would you, do, would you do more on the weak side? Nope. No, no, not necessarily. Your weak side is just always going to be your guide. So if you can do 12 good reps um, at, let's say, 20 pounds or about, you know, on your weak side, on your weak side. Yep. Or then eight kilos. The then you'll do the same on the other side. But you would never start with your strong side and then not be able to complete the gotcha. exercise gotcha. on your gotcha. weak side. OK, then after so so if you're going to do med ball throws um there's a number of jumps variations that you can do so you can do just a standard um body weight squat jump so if you just you know come back load your hips and then jump up and then land in a good spot so if you're going to come down up and then land back in a good spot what that teaches someone to do as a trainer i can watch mm -hmm. you and make yeah, me, sure like this. that so you are landing correctly like so this. then you're going to jump up and then land back in that good position Right, so jump up, land back in a good position. Good, and again, Should that's kind of... On, on the heels? 
on the and you're going to land right about the midfoot. So you're, you you okay. never want to be on your heels, right? Because we're athletes yeah. and yeah. we can't move from there. Yeah. And we never want to be so far up on our toes because again, never going to be able to move from there. So we always want to train, although we're not doing, you know, high, high rep movements, we always want to train the, the same way. That's why we would never lay down and do a leg press machine. Mm -hmm. There's always a time and a place for a leg press machine if you're injured or, you know, whatever might have happened to you over your lifespan. But, you know, if you are able to train standing, which if you're playing tennis, yeah. I would think we could all train yeah. standing. Um, that's the way that we would train. So that's just a simple jump Can you variation. Show me the, the, yeah, the jumps one more time. Yeah, so a jump squat, you're going to come down and jump up, and then you can start to pair those motions together. Okay. So the main thing with that is that when they land, you can see a lot of glute imbalances there. If, if my knees are diving in and yeah. I'm unable to keep my knees out, just kind of gives you, you know, maybe then we could do some like clam exercises or some banded uh, monster walks or just kind of some of those simple targeted exercise to, you know, really strengthen our glutes. Okay. So that's a, and then on top of that, now we're adding power. How many reps? To a strength. Same, I mean, you never, with Same, that, under, I mean, under even. Under 15. Under 15, and even with that, like if you're going for max effort, um, with something like that, you never want to do, perform the exercise at a mediocre level. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to do jump squats and you can give me five good jump squats, let's say my overall rep range, I want you to do 20 jump squats. You can give me five good jump squats at a time. We're going to go four sets of five. That's going to give me that overall number of 20. And I think that's a good um, way to think about training in general is that if you have a certain rep range that you're looking to finish, let's say you want to do 50 reps of squat, but you can only give me five good reps and you're going to do 10 sets of five and you're okay. not going to do you know 10 bad reps yeah yeah five that sets are of ten. five yeah. sets of 10 if you're unable to do mm -hmm. that and that's would you do this this much 50 50 reps of squats like with anybody any, any one of the tennis players um you know depending on where like they're at in their less. career usually less than that if they're if they're a new athlete and they're you know they're not adding a lot of weight to that <clears> movement <throat> if they're really just learning the movement um, then absolutely then you're gonna usually when you're just learning a movement your reps are going to be higher mm -hmm. when you're getting stronger and building strength through a movement then you get into some of those lower reps uh -huh. so we never we don't really train on the opposite end of that we don't really go into you know single rep maxes either um, some professional tennis players might might go into some of that type of training but in general especially with the collegiate athlete usually not going into a single rep max for uh -huh. safety reasons and you know again we're here for them to be the best tennis player that they can be I don't really care if they're the best weightlifter yeah, that they can be. Yeah I understand be. but still I'm, I'm wondering let's say uh, you told me that the majority of exercises is done standing standing up because that's what tennis is about standing right. up uh, will they ever do bench press? They'll do, they, they will do bench press, but probably not barbell bench press. So oh. we'll do dumbbell bench press, we'll do alternating bench press, because again, those are, you know, pointing out imbalances or muscle imbalances are really just making them stabilize through their core. If you're laying on your back, so we're still adding that balance in there, right? That you're laying on your back and you're maybe only moving one arm at a time, because while that arm's up, I have to stabilize yes. through my core yes. and then press with my opposite arm. Whereas, you know, if you're strict to a dumbbell bench press, you know, and that's just a little bit more dangerous on the shoulder in general. And again, don't care that they, if they can bench 225, yeah. just want them to have a really yeah. hard tennis surf. So for most of them, it's more important that they just have that general strength through the shoulder, mm -hmm. not that they're, you know, as of course, especially with our men's team, you know, everybody loves to do bench press. And so, you know, you have to play favor to that a little bit as well but you know getting them to understand the overall health of their shoulder is most mm -hmm. important um, you can kind of talk them off the wanting yeah. just to max out bench press then a question about uh, explosive strength mm -hmm. obviously when they serve there's an explosive strength that you have to put everything into that surf especially if they're like uh, precise if they can hit the right <laughs> the right yeah the, 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 the target spot yes. uh, and they want to to serve faster stronger uh, will the uh, like pyramid training or like uh, you know the standard strength building methods work for tennis players? Yeah, absolutely. So experience. that's more of um, a, a general movement variation. So you know, as someone gets stronger um, through the basic ranges of motions, now you're going to see maybe we would call it creativity come into play in those explosive, those power movements, whether it's with a med ball or whether it's with some jump training or plyometrics or anything of that sort. But first you have to establish that base strength 
Um, and then once that base strength is, ex you know, you have that base strength determined there, you can go in any direction with that. And that's where the strength and conditioning is so individual in that sense, because, you know, all these guys are going to train together, but they're all going to train differently. They may might all be squatting, but each and every one of them is going to squat differently. Whether that means that they're doing a split squat, what we talked about earlier, or whether it's that they're doing a goblet squat or doing a barbell squat. Um, the, the possibilities again are endless, but it's most important that they're doing what's right for their body and they, you know, everybody's got something a little bit different, whether it's a hip, a shoulder, they can't get their, you know, arms through on a front squat, they're having some restrictions there. You know, the, you just never want to sacrifice, you know, position for a weighted movement. And yes, I think, um, I understand. you know, it's a little bit easier to talk a female into that than to, you know, bring a guy down off yeah, of, yeah, yeah. you know, just wanting to train and lift heavy weights. But I think if you can understand the basis around why you're doing it, um, then it's a little bit easier for them to understand and just have that conversation with them about, you know, what's going to make them the best tennis player. They start to really understand and then they want to improve through those motions so they can either do the exercise that they've wanted to do all along and they just, the buy-in with that has been really awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. Aaron, so uh, thank you very much for this uh, profound explanation of the training <laughs> methods. I think in general, I, I, I see that we can be talking for, probably for 12 hours <laughs> until I won't get to learn uh, everything. Game, set the match.